My name is June Mummery. I am a proud advocate of the UK's fishing industry and a former Brexit Party MEP. I'm here today to ask the question, where did it all go wrong? And where do we go from here, reference fishing and the UK's coastal communities? Let me take you back to the 23rd of June 2016, a momentous day in the UK's political history, marking the moment the people of the United King Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. As you are aware, the topic of the UK's fishing industry featured heavily at the forefront of the Brexit campaign. It is now sadly evident that the fishing industry was used as no more than a political pawn and that the intentions referenced in the 2019 Conservative Manifesto were in fact empty promises. Our government failed to deliver on their commitment to leave the common fisheries policy and the UK becoming an independent coastal state. How can we be an independent coastal state when we don't control our own waters? In my opinion, we are seeing history repeats itself. Over 40 years ago, at the 11th hour, Ted Heath and his Tory government gave away our fisheries when we joined the common market. Boris Johnson also failed to take back control of our fisheries when we left the European Union. They betrayed fishermen and stole coastal folks' opportunities and aspirations. We still have 1,700 EU vessels capitalising on our rich resource with a complete disregard to sustainability and the impacts that unregulated activities are having on our waters. Eight of these EU vessels are super trawlers. These killing machines are 14 times the size of an average British fishing vessel. These gigantic factory ships scoop up whole shoals of fish together with any other living organism within proximity. These vessels have destroyed fisheries off West Africa, been banned from Australian waters, and have caused controversy in Chile, nearly wiping out whole fisheries, destroying the incomes of some of the world's poorest people. Why is our government allowing this overfishing to continue when Brexit was a golden, a golden opportunity to take back full control of our waters, which would enable us to become the most sustainable fisheries in the world. The UK could have easily been as successful as Iceland, Norway and the Faroe Islands. Upon Brexit, the UK automatically regained its 200 nautical mile exclusive zone under international law as an independent coastal state. Unfortunately, the awful deal, trade deal that the Tories brokered with the EU destroyed this golden opportunity. The UK has some of the richest fishing grounds in the world and they are extremely lucrative. Why do you think the EU was so desperate to hold on to its access? We've left ourselves wide open yet again through the disastrous terms of the Brexit deal and associated 2026 transitional period. The EU have cleverly outlined future negotiation terms ahead of time. How can the UK's fishing industry compete against elements such as aviation, transport, energy and further tariffs? 186 coastal MPs failed to protect their constituencies by signing this de detrimental deal. The simple fact is, for many people living and working within coastal communities, Brexit was their last hope. Fishing is the very lifeblood of coastal communities, the length and breadth of Great Britain. Once, not so long ago, jobs around the coastline of Britain were plentiful, as was people's pride in where they lived and worked. Over the past 40 years, the people of coastal communities have seen jobs, job prospects decline, a breakdown of social cohesion and an invasion of grave issues such as substance abuse, loneliness and lack of opportunity. 
Together with the income created by the fishing industry, many people failed to realise that for every job created at sea, another eight well-paid job, well jobs are created on land. With the breakdown of this economic link, residents of coastal communities have no other option than to depart for work opportunities elsewhere. Taken together, this situation has left the people of coastal communities feeling disassociated, not to mention depressed, deprived and desperate. Coastal MPs should have formed a strategic pack working together to ensure that the future of UK fishing was not dragged and sacrificed into any trade discussions, leaving it exposed and granting the EU with another bargaining tool. The resource within our waters is a public asset that belongs to each and every one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, did anyone in government ask your permission to trade your asset away. We currently have the opportunity to take back EU allocated fishing quota. This is no different to the milk quota scenario which we took back control of overnight. So let's think hypothetically now to a Great Britain that has taken back all quota associated within its waters through zonal attachment repatriating our resources, not enduring to the terms of the EU-governed common fishery policy. This would force the EU to purchase fish directly from the UK in order to service and sustain their already existing processing and supply chain. This happened when Iceland took back full control of their waters and forced, forcing UK vessels to retreat. Within a fortnight, we were buying their fish as we had thousands and thousands of processing jobs on the Humber that needed the raw material to keep their factories operating. 80% of the fish that the EU catches comes from British waters. One of the biggest earners are the French. Quill cool surprise. 35,000 tonnes of fish that arrive in Boulogne each year, two thirds comes from British waters. France has 84% of the cod quota in the English Channel. In the Celtic Sea, France gets nearly three times the British allocation of Dover Sole, roughly four times the amount of cod and five times more haddock. Ironically, the common fisheries policy was a French invention. If we had taken back full control of our waters, the French, Dutch, Belgians and Spanish would all have to fish within their own waters. Of course, we could swap fish like scallops, but most UK fishermen do not want access to EU waters. They want a fair crack at catching some of the millions of tonnes of fish taken from British waters each year by EU vessels. To add insult to injury, our Tory government just handed the French another 70 licences and 60 pending, free of charge while a UK fisherman has to pay between 80 to 100,000 pounds. Absolutely outrageous. The UK fishing industry could be worth 6.6 .6 billion to our economy net to plate. That's without the supply chain that goes hand in hand. As I said earlier, one job at sea creates eight on land. Just think of the number of skilled jobs that would be created in seaside towns, from processing to shipbuilding, which requires engineers, welders, platers, electricians, mechanics. The list of opportunity goes on and on. By simply taking back what is ours and providing opportunities, coastal communities would thrive once more. The majority of people that want the simple things in life, to leave school, to find a job, fall in love, get married and raise a family. Fishing could have helped make this a reality now and for future generations to come. So where can we go from here? There are mechanisms we can implement now to save our fishing industry and most importantly our ocean. One of these, for example, is we can reinstate the 1988 Merchant Shipping Act. 
This would force flagships to become domicile in the UK. A flagship, ladies and gentlemen, is a vessel that is on the British register but is foreign owned. They fish 54% of the UK's fishing quota. If they want to fish within our waters, <clears throat> it stipulates that they, their catches must be landed, sold and processed here in the UK. At present, these non-DOM vessels contribute absol ab absolutely nothing to the UK's economy. This would revitalise ports, processing and buying power. Any other foreign vessel granting access must also land here to deliver economic benefit from resources caught within our waters and ensure compliance. This will clamp down on flagships behaving like fishing tourists. Be a genuine British boat or pack your bags and leave. Thank you. We are an island nation, whether it's oil and gas, wind energy, aggregates or fishing. The UK should be harvesting these rich resources from our ocean for the benefit of the nation. Not only have we given away an industry that could have created thousands of jobs for coastal folk, we have traded an important food resource too. Food sh shortages are apparently on the horizon and we have an ocean full of fish which we should be catching and processing to feed our nation. Unfortunately, this government are sleepwalking into another resource crisis which could be avoided. Fish should be one of our cheapest stable foods. We are, we are surrounded by it. It has become quite apparent that coastal folk are the sorry people. Governments past and present have ignored the fact that coastal communities look to the sea for prosperity. They have been denied this state-owned right, as government deem them unworthy. It seems that fishing must be sacrificed for the financial sector. The majority of leave votes came from coastal and other rural areas who feel totally let down and betrayed. It is my, in my firmest belief that the Reform Party could change this and help govern our country so that all people are encompassed. As I said earlier, there are 186 coastal seats of which I believe the Reform Party could take many. My own hometown of Lowestoft has been devastated. Once a proud fishing port of the UK is now down to 12 under 10 metre fishing vessels. Back in the day, there were over 300 fishing vessels landing fish, creating work. Other ports that have been decimated have been equally ignored are Hull, Grimsby, Great Yarmouth, Fleetwood, Hartlepool, Boston, Skegness, Hastings, Clacton, New Haven, Ramsgate and many others. It is paramount we protect our ocean and Mother Nature. This is our duty and I ask you, my friends, to help. I hope I have helped you to understand just how badly our government has betrayed the fishing industry and coastal communities. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.